Good afternoon, my name is Justin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I play guitar on songs here in Nashville. And I've got a song here, this is from Texas. Uh, it's a standard pop country song. I have drums done and um, one acoustic done. And then there's a scratch vocal to sort of, to just give me a guide on the, on the song. Um, they sent me an intro lick that they would like. And this is how that goes. Here's the band with that lick, uh, unmuted. You can hear how one guitar, there's two guitars happening. If you, if you back up and listen again, um, it's basically double tracked, except one guitar ends the phrase and the other one goes, it like plays all the way through it. And then the other guitar. I think I'm gonna do the first one with the with the. I like the way that that sort of hangs and resets the phrase. So here we go. Um, playing my biscuit, analog outfitter Sarge. A little bit of throwback overdrive boost. I usually have the the volume down and back down a bit on the biscuit and. Uh, like this would be all knobs at, at uh, dimed. I usually ride with them down like 15, 20%. It kind of seems like it could use a little bit more from the amp. Let's let's turn the amp up just a hair. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Guitar volume on 10. I'm not trying to be that rock and roll with it. It just needs to be a dirty clean. So there'll be a lot of just sort of uh, hybrid picked, semi-muted country rhythm guitar in this song. And uh, however many times I gotta stop and start over again. You know, I, I could not play like this at all when I first moved to town. Um, I wasn't even planning on moving to Nashville in the beginning. It was gonna be LA. And then I went to LA and talked to as many musicians I could find, which they're they're a lot more spread out out there. There's not like a, a centrally located scene, you know? Every musician I talked to who agreed to meet with me or whatever, they're like, yeah, yeah, I play music. Do you, what, what do you got, you know? And I was like, well, I, I just wanted to know how you got started and what, you're, what, is, what does it look like to do that here? And most of the answers I got were like, well, I have, I have several other jobs as well. Like, I, they're... The minimum amount of money you need to make to pay rent in a place in LA um, necessitates multiple irons in the fire for a lot of people. Unless you got a pretty high profile touring gig or you work a lot in the film and TV scene, you know. Um, I grew up on rock and roll. I grew up on Jimmy Page. I went through a huge Stevie Ray Vaughan phase, which I think everybody who gets a strat or something like, you know, just, <laughs> you just start flailing away on Stevie Ray Licks, and yeah, uh, I, I got through that, and kind of had a bit of a Pat Metheny phase, and started thinking like, oh, you can create melodies on the guitar, okay, that's interesting, and then, you know, when I was teaching math at K-State, and thinking, this sucks, <laughs> Everybody hates this, and they hate me by association. Do I want to do this the rest of my life? I don't, I don't think I do. What do I really want to do? Well, let's try to do that, you know. And uh, I, I had to tell my fiance at the time, like, I think we need to try to move some. I think we need to try to move to California. Need to try to move to LA, you know, because I, I have to try to play 
have to try. I have to get it out of my system. I'm going to always wonder if I don't try. So she was on board and we went out and visited and it was like, nope. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of the musicians I talked to out there said, I'm thinking about going to Nashville. Have you thought about Nashville? And I said, well, I don't play country at all. I am not a country guy. And some of them were like, you know, you don't necessarily have to be right now. There's a, there's a lot of rock kind of getting into country music. And so I started listening to records out of Nashville. Um, I was completely unaware of everything going on, especially in the modern, at the time, modern country scene. And yeah, there were, there were records being made with Les Pauls and Marshalls with SGs, you know, um, and it wasn't all, you know, Brent Mason, chicken picking type Telecaster stuff. Uh, I had to give myself an absolute crash course in any kind of country playing whatsoever uh, when I when I started trying to get my first touring gig, which which happened the year after I got there. I got the uh, the Terry Clark gig, and she's a Canadian artist. She had some really cool records in the 90s. I haven't listened to a lot of her recent stuff. I used to I used to know all of it up until, you know, 2008 cuz that was my gig. <laughs> and the players on her records were Brent obviously and Kenny Greenberg and then there was some Stuart Smith stuff that I thought was super cool. Um and I had to learn all of that and I remember check this out. This is this is terrible. I remember going to my first rehearsal with her. I was offered the gig and they just said, yeah, let's, let's rehearse and make this work. And I think that like the weekend of shows after the rehearsal was sort of like a paid audition. I wish more acts did it that way, um, where you do a rehearsal, you do a couple shows, you get paid for the, all the time you're investing in learning their set, and they get to see not only how you act on an audition, which everybody's going to be a little not 100% themselves, a little off kilter in an audition. But when you get out on the road and you hang out and you see how they act the 23 hours of the day that you're not on stage, that's a big deal for, for artists, right? They did it that way. And I ended up keeping the gig, which was cool. Had it for a year. Um, ended up moving to other things almost immediately, uh, but the very first rehearsal, there was a song of hers, and I wish I could remember which one it was, but there was this really great Brent Mason solo on it, and going into rehearsal, I had just sort of copped my own thing on a Telecaster in that spot, and I remember being a little bit nervous about that coming up, and we got to the song, I played a solo, and I was like, hey, that, that sounded pretty good. I got... I think I've got that, that down. Did another song or two or whatever, and we took a break. And the band leader, he goes, hey, you're going to get that solo, right, on whatever that song was. And I said, yeah, I mean, I, um, did I do something wrong? Like, I, I like the, the one that I played. And he goes, no, you're going to get the solo, right? You've got to, you need to play the one off the record. You get to get it note for note. That, that's got to be priority number one, like. And I go, oh, <laughs> like I had no idea. I had no clue. So I did this a lot. I was, um, I would sit at the gate at the airport with headphones on and a guitar and try to figure things out. And at the time there was like this slow downer app that I had on my MacBook, and I would, um, I only had the free version. So it'll either play the first, what is it? Like, it'll play the first 30 seconds or one fourth of the audio file, whichever comes first, okay? So if the song's longer than two minutes, it's only gonna give you 30 seconds. If it's under two minutes, it's gonna give you a quarter of it or some, something like that. I, I don't remember exactly the way it was, but what I did, <laughs> I took this free recording software called Audacity. I would drop an MP3 that I was supposed to learn into that, and I would record minutes of dead space behind it to trick my free slow downer app into giving me the entire song. 
So if this if the file was three minutes long, I would record nine minutes behind it, so that when when the slow downer app played the first twenty five percent of the file, it got me the whole song. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny. Um, and I think it was like 60 bucks or something, but I was like 60 bucks for some dumb app at the time, you know, that was kind of egregious. Nowadays it's like, you don't even blink at something like that. Pretty funny, <laughs> but yeah, I got all that stuff down note for note. So here's going to be my version of the stuff that I, you know, gave myself a crash course in when I first moved to town and have sort of developed on my own. I'm still not like I'm not the kind of player that you can close your eyes and say, I think that's Brent Mason. You know, there, there's a lot of guys that do that really well. But I'm, I'm, again, trying to come up with something compelling that helps the vocal out, that helps the song out. And I guess I, you know, that's my main goal. So let's see if we can do that here. Get in right there. that's a little too bluesy for for this song and for the for the vocal the whole i just i want to stay away from the i don't know that thing the old flat sevens let's get back in same spot punch in here. That's just too much on the lyric there. There's our punch in spot, top of the back half of the verse.
Down chorus, just drums. Uh, I should build there. Let's do that. Let's do that. better. Okay, now that I got that guitar done, let's uh, play another track. I'm looking for a phaser. That's cool, but do we change the tone a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. So here comes that, uh, here comes that intro. I'm terrible at singing. Always been a little jealous of the guys who could sing. I actually lost an audition to a guy. <laughs> this was so funny. Um, here's how not to audition a player. Have them learn your entire set just for the audition. That's uh, cruel and inhumane and a major red flag. And if any artist asks you to do that, before you have secured the gig, it's not worth your time. Don't do it. Do not do it. I'm not going to name the artist who did this because he's still around. And uh, um, But I went in and I had to learn 10 songs for the audition, top to, like top to bottom, all the parts. And there was one where they wanted us to play... There's one song where they wanted us to play slide and then also play rhythm guitar. Well, the slide part on the record required tuning the high E string down to D in order to play that minor third interval between those two strings um, on a slide. And I did that, and then I remember hitting like, like an A chord or something, and there was that high D string ringing out, and it was like, oh, and I was like, oh man, how am I supposed to do this? I guess I can't play the slide part as it actually is. I would have to modify it. So I made a bit of a mistake there in the audition. And also, like, I wasn't a great singer. They wanted us to sing, too. And it was like, 10 songs? You want me to learn 10 songs? Vocal and guitar? Just for an audition? Well, as, uh, as I was pushing my cart of gear out of the rehearsal room, they, we auditioned at SIR, which, which has all these different rehearsal rooms and... Basically, like you back your vehicle up to the loading door, you put all your gear on one of these carts that you can push down the hall and you, and you move to a parking spot or out into the street because the lot was often full. And then you go back to your rehearsal room. And uh, as, I'm, as I'm pushing my cart out of the audition, here comes a guitar player I know, this really great, this really great guy. His name's Greg, Greg Hagen. Hi, Greg, if you're watching. Uh, Greg sings like a canary, like a canary angel. And we said hi, and just as he's passing me, he sings one of the harmony parts to one of these songs just perfectly as he's walking by, you know? And I'm like, oh, there is no way I just got this gig. And sure enough, he got the gig. <laughs> uh, man. And then, then that's when I started thinking, like, why did I do that? Knowing that I'm not the greatest singer, why did I learn all 10 songs? Because I really wanted the gig, you know? All these successes I've had are uh, in, in between stacks and stacks of failures and rejections and everything. Like, that's just reality. That's, that's how it goes here. So, anyway, 
I think I've forgotten this lick. Let's do the second track. If I need to be busy on this guy in verse two, but let's let's start on verse two one more time. Let's not play exactly the same thing in the chorus this time. Bridge. That's what I need to do. One more time. I feel like there needs to be something that's kind of over that. 
Here we go. Something, something like that. How about the turn? How about the turn? Cool. So, I just did the first part of it because it's not as long as the outro. So when you hear that, and then you hear the outro, the outro sounds like the logical progression of that, you know? Like, it feels like the thing. Okay, where is... Tap Division, so I'm on my timeline here. Let's do an eighth note. See what happens. chorus because that was a little goofy. I just have an eighth note with a really long decay and kind of a loud feedback level, right?
Okay, so this might not necessarily work great with what I have in the outro, but um, there's a joke that we have in Nashville, fix it in the mix, you know, like the mix will take care of it, no big deal. But kind of, I, I wonder if if these two being panned in the same direction is, is what our problem is. So let's, let's, uh, let's listen to this with things panned out. I like having that uh, tucked back. So, cool. That works. I'll see y'all later. Have a good one.